In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and God, amen. May the Lord bestow upon us His blessing, mercy, grace, and wisdom now and ever into the age of ages. Amen. Uh, today is the second Sunday of the blessed month of Kiev. And uh, as we know, this month is filled with preparation for the glorious feast of the Nativity of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And <clears throat> the, there are many sub-themes of of this month, um, which which have to do with one of them is praise, and when as you know when we take the gospel according to Saint Luke chapter one throughout the four Sundays of the of the blessed month, um, in each of those passages which go from verse one all the way to to the end, um, <clears throat> in each of this, these passages with the exception of the first Sunday, we see a prayer or a praise or a glorification of God or the Holy Virgin. <clears throat> and so uh, last week we see Archangel Gabriel coming to Zacharias, the priest, as you see it here, right? Um, bless you. And uh, he announces to him the birth of John the Baptist, right? Um, and he doubts. And because of it, after that, uh, Archangel says, I am Gabriel who stands in the presence of God and was sent to you to bring to you these glad tidings, but behold, you will be mute. So he didn't have the opportunity to praise God and he was not ready to praise and he was silenced because he needed to contemplate and to think and to and to believe more strongly in, in what the angel told him, but also more in the coming of the Savior. <clears throat> and so later on, as we'll see, um, uh, next or in two weeks, um, his mouth was open. If you look at the bottom row, his mouth was open and his tongue loosed, and he spoke praising God, saying, "Blessed is the Lord God of Israel." And he begins to praise the Lord and even prophesy about his son. <clears throat> right today, we see um, that the glorious feast of the Annunciation. It's not the celebration of the feast, but actually the same readings, uh, pretty much that we do in the celebration of uh, the Feast of uh, Annunciation on the 29th of, of Baram Hat, or April 7th, typically every year, as well as the 29th of almost every month in the calendar. <clears throat> right. So after, um, uh, or when the Archangel Gabriel comes to the Holy Virgin, he says, Rejoice, highly favored one, the Lord is with you, blessed are you among women. And she was confused because he's, be he's, he's praising her. Um, and later on we know why. Um, and um, we see the veneration that even the angels give to the Holy Virgin Saint Mary, right? And then next week when she comes to her relative Elizabeth to serve her, the same thing happens. And even she uses almost the same words um, uh, mysteriously, um, maybe through the Holy Spirit most likely. Um, and she says, blessed you among women and blessed is the fruit of your womb. Blessed is she who believed um, because he, she knew that the holy angel came to her and uh, told her about the birth of Christ from her. And she said, let, today, she said what? At the end of the gospel. He says, let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Um, <clears throat> so because she believed, it happened. And because it happened, Elizabeth praised her um, for her faith. <clears throat> Okay. And, and then St. Mary gives the, the magnificent or the beautiful praise um, to God that we focus on so much in the midnight praises of Kiek. We So much that most of it, you know, when we do the seven explanations for the first seven of Theotokias and we do the gospel, we, we take primarily from the praise of the Holy Virgin. <clears throat> Where she says, my soul, she starts by saying, my soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit has rejoiced in God, my Savior. Um, so this is the theme of that the church puts for us in the month before the birth, right? Just like St. Luke does before he describes the birth, he, birth of Christ, he goes in detail of the events that, that proceed. <clears throat> and so the church does the same thing um, before we kind of focus on the birth of Christ. Right? And then actually, when do we read the, the, the gospel of the birth of Christ? I think we mentioned this before. It, it's um, not as easy as you think of an answer. So you would expect the reading of the 
Christmas feast, the nativity, to be the birth of Christ. But it's not. When do we do it? It's the day before. Okay? The, the paramon of the nativity. The gospel of the feast is what? When the Magi come, which they didn't come the same day. They came several days and probably weeks after. Um, we'll get to that later. But so the feast uh, or the birth of Christ is mentioned by um, the the evangelist St. Luke in chapter 2, right? And we see the proclamation um, that starts with the angel, right? Who tells who? Anyone know? The, the announcement of the birth of Christ on the day happens, yes, with the shepherds first, okay? Um, <clears throat> and the angel tells the shepherds, Behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, for there is born to you this day in the city of David, a savior and then he explains to them that uh, you'll find a, a, what is the sign that will be given the the manger right you'll find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes lying in a manger so they go and see but they also hear the proclamation of the heavenly hosts as well saying glory to god in the highest on earth peace goodwill toward men um <clears throat> and then they come and they they actually not only go straight to um, uh, the, the Lord Jesus Christ, but they begin to proclaim the, the praise and the glory of God and the details of what they had seen um, throughout the region, okay? Um, <clears throat> and they end up, as we know, glor return glorifying God and praising God for all the things that they heard, heard and seen, okay? Um, why are we kind of talking all about this? Because I just want to elucidate the, the importance of the understanding of how we praise and why we praise the way we do and how we can discern what is praise and and what are the different levels especially when it comes to just music in general um like for example saint paul says to the colossians let the word of christ dwell in you richly um with all and all wisdom teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs so he gives different designations or different levels of of music or and even of praising God, okay, uh, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. So e even uh, we'll start with with this delineation that Saint Paul gives with the Psalms and the hymns in the church, right? And even the spiritual songs. Um, <clears throat> well, the hymns kind of include the praises as well. Um, and, but then there's also other things um, in society, or maybe that that are prevalent, especially during this time of of Christmas, like, you know, the Christmas carols, but even not every carol is, is created equal. Why? Because as we'll see, there's some that are, are very similar or on the same line of what our church does. And there are others that are completely have nothing to do with Christ. Right? So we have to put them on a different level. Right? Um, and that also goes with the secular, secular music as well. <clears throat> but today we'll fo focus more on the praise of God. Right, especially his birth. Right, so <clears throat> um, again, we say like there's holiday songs, but then there's Christmas carols. And if you look at the history, that uh, again, this has nothing to do with the, the Orthodox Church. But um, some people say, well, why can't we sing it? Right, okay, we can't sing it in the church, but why can't we sing at home? There's nothing wrong with doing that, right? Um, but there's a difference. So like the Christmas carols, for example, they're traditional. They started in the Christian churches in, in most likely in Europe, right? Two, three hundred years ago. Um, <clears throat> they're based on scripture and the purpose is to praise God as well as to bring the joy of the birth of the Lord to the community, to the people around, um, especially during the cold months or the, the times where people are um, not feeling well, okay? Um, <clears throat> so they have a lot more depth than the songs um, that have to do with Santa and things like that, right? So um, again, why are we doing this? Because um, I and I'll give some examples just to show you so that um, we understand the difference, okay? And hopefully we can apply this to all types of music um, because Again, not all music is created equal, and there's some that glorify God, there's some that do the opposite, and there's some that are kind of just in between, okay? Um, <clears throat> so, for example, Joy to the World, this is based on Psalms. So, if it's based on the Psalm, then 
we know the text is appropriate for the most part, right? Um, and hold the, the purpose of the coming of Christ is for our hearts, as it says, to prepare room for Christ, or all the room, not just a small corner in, in, in our heart, but the whole heart, right? <clears throat> um, and for the sins to be eliminated, because as we have been reading in, in the scriptures of today, um, has, has to deal with the coming of Christ from heaven for us, for our salvation, for our sins to be forgiven. We know this, right? But that was the purpose, you know? Um, and so when we see the birth, we should remember all of this, okay? Um, <clears throat> so that's one example, right? Another, I'll just go through a few, right? I'm not gonna go through all of them, but just to, so that we have discernment um, and we use these to glorify God and, and to praise Him, right? So, for example, you know, the, I'm not going to sing with them or, or put all of the words, but the idea of um, the Lamb that sees the star, so this is the witness of the birth of Christ, and the shepherd who hears, or see, as we described before, hears the voice of angels, and then the mighty uh, kings who, who see and believe and travel to offer. Right, and then to all of us, well, we have to receive, you know, peace, goodness, and light from the King of Kings. Right, very, very nice. Okay, um, <clears throat> I'm not again trying to encourage for us to do this here. That's completely inappropriate um, because we have our own, and as we'll see, our own are in a sense richer and fuller. And so, um, what we do, you know, it, it, or what is done in society is is good, but Ours is better, right? Um, and you can have that as supplemental, but there, there's some uh, necessary things that, that the church uh, does not gloss over, okay? Uh, another one for 12 days of Christmas, actually this, um, uh, they say, I'm not 100% sure, but they say a few hundred years ago, um, during the time of when Christianity was not um, easily proclaimed in public um, in, in certain areas in Europe, so they they came up supposedly uh, with with this um, hero to describe um, to the new believers or the people who want the catechists who want to be baptized in the Lord the the main doctrines of the church or the the focus on the important things that have to do with salvation before they were baptized <clears throat> right so there's sim symbols here for all of these things I won't go into them but and a lot of them we we also in the Orthodox Church use the numbers for the same thing, <clears throat> some more than others, okay? Um, <clears throat> so you just have that, okay? Um, <clears throat> but then, like we said, with any type of music, we have to be discerning. Um, as as St. John says in his epistle, test the spirits to see whether they are of God, okay? Um, and so some people say, well, first of all, just look at the words. What are the words saying? And what are they teaching? And what is the message that is, is being proclaimed? Um, again, this apl can apply to all types of music. And some people will say, I'll just listen to the music, but I won't listen to the words. There's a danger in that, right? And even, like, do you know how Arius spread his heresy throughout the world? He was a priest, actually, in, in, in the church before he got condemned and excommunicated and, and what happened to him. But how did he try to, to spread his false belief about Christ not being begotten of the Father before all ages? He used music. <laughs> okay? So that's why you have to, oh, that music is nice, it's catchy, but make sure you, the words are, are godly or that they are um, not distracting you or teaching you or put it, placing inside of you um, something that is not holy. <clears throat> we have to be careful. Okay? So, because these words end up shaping our thoughts and our beliefs and our actions and our attitudes, um, so we have to be careful, right? <clears throat> and then other people will say, well, um, I like the tune, so I'll get any nice words and replace it. Like, for example, they say, okay, fine, I'll just take the words of the church and apply it to secular music. That's a danger too, <laughs> okay? Um, even Beethoven, he said, um, music is the language of the spirit. So, um, <clears throat> uh, Anyone can utilize this as a tool to invoke certain emotions and feelings and, and attitudes as well, okay? Um, 
there's joyful tunes and there's sad tunes. Even in the church we have, um, based on the time of the year, we, we change the tune um, to invoke a certain, um, not emotion, but a attitude or direction um, of the spirit. <clears throat> Okay. And then the last thing has to do is, well, what is the background of this thing? You know, who wrote it? When? Why? What is it? What is it mainly about? Um, <clears throat> and so these are the things that we use. Okay. Um, so th this is, I think, just important in general when it comes to music that we have to be uh, careful. About. Um, <clears throat> so here's just another example. You know, again, it's a nice song and everything, but theologically it's very incorrect. And the person who wrote it it was only about maybe 20 years ago, and they say, oh, what did you think about it? Well, I just um, imagine me sitting coffee with St. Mary, and what are the questions I'm going to ask her? Okay, that's different than what we were saying before about the purpose of praising God. And a lot of those carols were put in the church, um, their churches, right? <clears throat> so it was it was a praise. It was. It's not at the same level as something like this. Because even the quest, the first question, like, did you know that he would walk on water, his sight of the blind, calm the storm. Um, okay, maybe she didn't know these details, but she knew that he were, was going to do miracles. Right? We know that. The scripture says that. Even the gospel that we read, like, as we'll get to it, Archangel Gabriel says to her, right? Did, did, did you know he, he would save the world? Yes, of course. <laughs> right? She called him my savior today, right? So, or, or to next Sunday, <clears throat> right? So she did know. Um, so that's what I'm saying. Okay, songs are nice, but just make sure you don't follow the theology and contemplate on, on the wrong theology, right? Um, so again, here, um, the words of the angel, and behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. What does Jesus mean? God with us, that's Emmanuel. Yeah, this, God saves. So his name, usually the name reflects their service, their personality, their role, their identity. So God is telling her, don't call him anything. You have to call him Jesus, right? And Joshua's from the same root, right? Why? Because he's going to be the savior. <laughs> um, so how did St. Mary not know he was going to be the savior, right? Um, and then he continues to say, he will be great. We call the son of the highest, most high. Again, reference to his divinity. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David, and he will reign the king of kings. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, not just for a period of time. And of his kingdom, there will be no end. Right? And so the church takes these words and puts them in the hymns intentionally. We're not going to make up the things. Like the, 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 the church hymns, most of them are taken almost word for word from scripture. And sometimes we take various scripture, um, that like two or like different prophecies, we'll put in, into one verse. Um, the, and that's the beauty of, of, like, these theologians, you know, thought and prayed with a lot of depth and said, well, what is the most important message that we need to, to, to proclaim about the birth of Christ? Um, and that applies to all of the, the hymns and, uh, or sorry, all the fasts and feasts of the church. <clears throat> um, so, um, continuing on what, what she knew, right? So the shepherds came, like we, we said before, right? Um, St. Luke continues in chapter 2. Um, <clears throat> now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord, we already kind of read part of this, stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy. So this proclamation of joy for, from the hymns and the songs and the carols, yes, it's supposed to bring great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a savior. So he told the shepherds he's going to be a savior. How did St. Mary not know? The shepherds went right after, right? Um, <clears throat> and how do we know this? Well, St. Luke continues. And he says, They came with haste, found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. Now when they had seen him, they made widely known the saying. So they didn't stay quiet like St. Mary did. She took all the things and she pondered them in her heart. And uh, she, she wasn't an apostle. She wasn't preaching uh, by words, just uh, she kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. That's what we have to do with the scripture. That's what we have to do with the hymns. That's what we have to do with um, the, the psalms and the spiritual songs, <clears throat> right? Um, and then they returned as, as we, we, we read before. Um, so this is 
this is important for us to grow internally. So it's kind of like the seeds. We don't just throw th seeds on the top and say, oh, that's nice, <laughs> right? Maybe they'll grow. No, you have to bury them deep and water them, right? And, and, and keep watering them and making sure they're protected so that they will grow and bear fruit. <clears throat> Um, so this is what we do with the scripture. This is what we do with the hymns. This is what we do with the spiritual songs. <clears throat> um, and for example, like you know the burning bush, uh, that song, that praise that we do in the evening. But actually, it's 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 taken. It's it's almost a spinoff of the Thursday Theotokia, which we do every week um, in in the um, midnight praise. So in the Midnight Praise, there's a, a part, a hymn called the Theotokeia, which is primarily um, focusing on the, the veneration of the Holy Virgin Mary who gave birth to our Savior, right? And every day of the week, it's kind of like a different theme. So the Thursday one uh, starts like this by saying, the bush which Moses had seen in the wilderness and the fire that was in it did not burn its branches. We know this from Exodus. This is a symbol of Mary. We don't know this from Exodus, right? The undefiled virgin, which the word of the Father, Christ, the Logos, came and took flesh from her, right? The fire of his divinity did not burn the womb of the virgin. This is what we say in, in the praise that you're all familiar with. Um, but the church uses the hymns and the songs and, and um, the music to, to go deeper into the theology. And, and that's why we say who wrote it. What type of theologian is, uh, is their theology correct or not? Because it's going to affect me, right? And after she gave birth to him, she remained a virgin. He did not cease to be divine. So this was a heresy. It still is, right? Some people think, oh, he stopped being God when he came down. Or some people don't even believe that he was God at all. We know this, right? Um, he came and became the son of man. So his full humanity as well. For he is the true God who came and saved us. Uh, the, again, there's the Savior. Today. So, I mean, this is just one small passage from one small hymn on on uh, that, that the church offers to us. But see the depth. Um, this is why we should be proud um, of, of uh, the tradition, the, the holy tradition in, in the Orthodox Church. It can't be compared. Other things, it's nice, but this is better, right? Uh, Friday the Otokeya. He took what is ours. What did he take from our, what did he take from the Holy Virgin? Humanity, right? Uh, is fully fully human and gave us what is his. This is where some heresies start. He gave us the um, to be partakers of the divine nature, and we're children of God by grace, not by nature. Okay, so um, that's a whole other talk, right? Um, but and and this is kind of the refrain on the Friday Theotokia. There's something that repeats, um, and so this is the theology that helps uh, repeat. Um, so just like Arius used, so maybe Arius realized this um, method and he applied it for wrong, right? But the church insisted and kept uh, these hymns to, to bring the proper uh, theology. Um, so because like one of the fathers says, a true theologian will truly pray. And someone who truly prays is truly a theologian, right? <clears throat> um, okay, so... Um, that's what. That's why uh, the the scripture says, you know, I will pray with my heart. I will pray with understanding, um, and, and that's why, like for example, when we put up um, the hymns on the screen, so you can understand while you're praying, even if it's in a different language. That the important thing is to pray, um, <clears throat> and so um, as Saint Paul says, we conclude with this. He says, therefore, by him. Let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise to God, like we say in the liturgy. The sac it, the praise is a sacrifice that we offer. Just like the three magi came and offered gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh, we offer ourselves, we offer our time, we offer our praise, we offer our hearts. Of course, it's nothing compared to what he has offered us, but this is what we can do. Um, and, and so we offer the sacrifice of praise in the right way, with the right understanding, and with the right mindset. May the Lord give us um, the sacrifice of praise and uh, the blessings of this time so we could truly prepare for him to enter into our heart, not just for a day or a season, but forever, <clears throat> that we may live with him uh, forever. Glory be to him now and to the age of all ages.